Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. In a normal week, if we had an announcement of a new Federal Reserve Chair, that would pretty much take up all of our time. There would be so much to speak about in terms of the impact on monetary policy. The um, idea of the tax reform details coming out the same day as a new Federal Reserve Chair being announced, uh, needless to say, has made it a rather eventful day here today. So we're actually recording live on the day that the House released its 400 plus page plan uh, for the tax reform bill that will be attached via reconciliation to the already approved budget resolution and now goes to the Senate for their approval. And then just hours later, President Trump, as expected, has appointed Fed Governor Jerome Powell to be the next Federal Reserve Chair. And it's sort of amazing that that's the second biggest story of the day. If you think about it, in my um, entire lifetime, uh, we've only had a, four Federal Reserve chairs. And really, in terms of my adult life, where I've actually been watching markets, you're talking about Greenspan, Bernanke, Yellen, and now we're getting a fourth one, and uh, no one's really even that engaged in it as a news story. Partially because, of course, as we're going to talk about, the tax reform details are a bigger story, and understandably so. But also because there is a sense in which you have a different person. He happens to be a different gender. You know, there's some changes, but ideologically, and I think from a policy standpoint, the president went down a continuity path instead of a reform path or a different um, uh, kind of perspective on, on the uh, implementation of monetary policy. So Jerome Powell is a very accomplished public servant, a very respected um, economist. He does not hold a PhD in economics, um, which uh, all of his predecessors in my lifetime have. Uh, I don't see that as either a positive or a negative. I don't think it matters much. I think um, that he is a very dovish, uh, easy money type guy. He's very unlikely to rock the boat much. I make allusion to this in DividendCafe.com. There was an 85% chance before we knew that Powell would be the governor, the, the new chair of the Fed raising rates in December, quarter point. There's an 85% chance now in the Fed funds futures market. So the market hasn't responded. They see it just sort of continuing as is. And I would say that will very likely apply to their reduction of their balance sheet as they normalize monetary policy. Uh, but we do still have some more things to watch in terms of Fed personnel. The vice chair, should he go President Trump appoint? Uh, uh, John Taylor or Kevin Warsh in that position, a and anybody actually that is of a very different ideological framework to uh, the person who will be the nation's leading central banker, I think that would be very interesting. Um, so we want to watch how some of these empty governorships get filled. Let's talk tax reform quickly. Um, I sort of itemize a lot of the key bullet points at DividendCafe.com. I'd encourage you to look at that. The, the vast majority of the framework we've known uh, as they announced it some time ago, but we went from that half a page um, kind of construct back in April to about nine pages, I think it was, in August. And now we got 429 pages in an actual piece of legislation this morning. And I do expect a couple adjustments at the Senate level, but more or less we are getting permanent corporate tax reduction at the 20% rate, down from 35. Um, a one-time repatriation of foreign profits, a territorial tax system highly disincentivizing American companies to go set up offshore in the, in the future. Um, very comprehensive reform on the business tax side of things. Pass through entities, partnerships, sole proprietorships, LLCs, class S corporations now um, achieving a 25% rate instead of passing through to the ordinary income rate. So a lot of advantages to business owners who are job creators, uh, who make capital expenditures, the objective here being growth-oriented, supply-side, uh, incentivizing to business investment. These things, I think, were very much accomplished in the tax bill. Um, as far as just individual tax reduction, not a lot of it. At the middle class level, more. Um, a doubling of the standard deduction, 
uh, less rates and lower rates at, at greater bandwidths of income uh, for those earning significantly higher amounts of money. Um, basically, more or less a break even. Uh, a couple changes since we last spoke about this. The property tax deduction, local tax, they are bring, allowing for a federal deduction up to $10,000 worth. Um, previously, they had said they'd be getting rid of that. They did not change their mind on the state tax deduction, something I'm very proud of them for. And I offer my kudos to House and Ways, uh, the House of Ways and Means Chair uh, Kevin Brady, who I think uh, has done a fantastic job through this very difficult process. Uh, but in terms of some of the other bullet points I would highlight, the child tax credit um, is being increased 60%. And the uh, mortgage interest deduction is being reduced to, uh, uh, on $500,000 of mortgage debt, down from a million. A key point here, it's not changing current mortgages. The deductibility for a legacy mortgage remains at a million. For a new mortgage taken, 500000 so expect a lot of refinance activity if anybody's on the bubble in the next couple months. Because if you refinance a mortgage after January 1, the deductibility will be limited to 500000 assuming this bill passes. Um, I, I think it's all very healthy, reform-oriented change. Reach out to our office with any questions you have. But essentially, this week, we see a couple pretty significant things kind of advanced. We, the tax reform is not passed yet. But they are trying to pass it retroactive to January 1, 2017. And that to me is the amazing part of this, is that they have a path to do it. I'd put it at about 50-50. Um, I think you're well over 90% odds right now that they're going to get this done, uh, meaning tax reform pretty close to what we saw today passed. But as far as getting it done retroactively, it, it, a lot of things will have to line up for that to happen. If it does, everyone's already paid their withholdings and their quarterlies and everything for this year. Anyways, so what will happen is there would be a lot of refund checks in, in uh, April of 2018. And that may be advantageous to the Republicans in a midterm election. So I suspect there's some politics at play here as well. Uh, all that to say, um, quite a bit to chew on here. We've spent a lot of time this week uh, analyzing, particularly the business tax side of this, full expensing on CapEx, um, just so many loopholes going away. Um, I'm really, really happy about that. So uh, reach out with questions. Thanks for listening to Dividend Cafe. Thanks for watching. Uh, please feel free to not only read at our website, but also listen to our podcast. You know, I have a whole lot of other information there as well. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks so much.